OK, let's work on some practice questions with concentration here. So calculate the concentration of a solution consisting of 15.34 grams of sodium chloride and 1.342 liters of water at 60 degrees C in the following units. OK, so let's start with molarity. Molarity, capital M, equals moles of solute over liters of solution. So first, let's identify our solute. So I have this, and I have, I should put it up on the same line here. I have this. I have two components here, right? It says a solution that has 15.34 grams of sodium chloride and 1.342 liters of water. So which is my solute? In almost all of these examples, water will be your solvent. Water is almost always the majority component. There's almost always going to be more water than anything else. So that doesn't have to be true, because we can be talking about solutions that are made up of other liquids, like alcohol solutions. And maybe water is a, a small component of that, like a 70% isopropyl alcohol. There's 70% isopropyl isopropanol and 30% water. So in that case, we'd say isopropanol would be the solvent. But that's the exception in the problems that we're going to look at. Almost all of the problems, if not all of the ones that we look at in this class, water is going to be our solvent because water is going to be the majority component. So water solvent, sodium chloride is our solute. So I need moles of solute. I have grams of solute. So to solve for molarity, I need to turn grams of solute into moles of solute. I also need liters of solution. So when I mix this amount of sodium chloride into this amount of water, it's true that sodium chloride has some volume. And when I take that the 15 grams and mix it into this water, it will no longer be 1.342 liters of water. So I know how many liters of solvent I have. I don't necessarily know how many liters of solution I have, because adding this salt will change the volume. But adding this salt will change the volume to a very, very, very small extent. There is enough room for the water particles to kind of spread out a little bit and make room for all of this salt without increasing the volume very much. So what we're going to assume in this class is that if I know the volume of the solvent, that's equal to the volume of the solution. Adding a solid to a solvent does not take much volume. Now, if I'm making a liquid liquid solution, then the volume of the, of the liquid is going to be the sum of the two volumes of liquid that I add together. But if I'm adding a solid to a liquid, then I don't have to consider how much volume this is going to take up when I add it to the liquid. So what that means is that this is the liters of solution. So what I have to do then, right now I have grams of solute, and I have liters of solvent. But we just explained that that's really liters of solution, because adding the solute is not going to change the volume of the solution. So I need to convert grams of solute to moles of solute, and then I have moles of solute over liters of solution, and that's molarity. So I've got 15.34 grams of sodium chloride, and I need to convert grams of sodium chloride to moles. And we'll look up on the periodic table what the mass of sodium and the mass of chlorine are and add them together. So Na is 22.9. Chlorine is 35.45. So that gives us 
in every one mole. So remember, um, unit in our dimensional analysis, grams of sodium chloride on in the numerator will cancel grams of sodium chloride in the denominator. So then I'll have moles of sodium chloride after I complete this calculation. So 15.34 divided by 58.44 equals 0 0.26249 moles of sodium chloride, because right, my units are moles. All right, so to calculate molarity now, I just put moles of solute. My solute is sodium chloride, 26249 moles of sodium chloride, moles of solute, divided by 1.342 liters of solution. Running out of space here. Let's shrink that up a bit. Divided by 1. 0.342 equals 0 0.1956 capital M molar. So it, our units will be capital M. So I had four sig figs and I've got four sig figs here. I already rounded to four sig figs in my last one. All right. So this my final answer would be this solution is 0.1956 molar sodium chloride and water so let's take the same numbers and do molality so now I've got grams actually I already know how many moles of solute so let's not go all the way back to grams we already calculated moles of solute so I can use that again and molality is moles of solute over kilograms of solvent all right, so let me make this consistent. Right now I have liters of solvent, liters, and I need to convert that to kilograms of solvent. And I already have moles of solute. I already calculated that. So how do I go from liters of water, 1.342 liters of H2O, I need liters of H2O to grams of H2O, right, grams per liter, or I need to uh, know grams per milliliter. And generally, when we're um, looking at values of density, I'm trying to convert the volume of water to the mass of water. So if I know how much space the water is taking up, and I know the density of water, then I can calculate how much mass there is. But we have to remember that the density of water changes with temperature. So if I want to know what the density of water is, I need to know what the temperature is. The temperature is 60 degrees C. So what's the density of water at 60 degrees C? 0.98324 grams per mil. So I need to change this to milliliters. <coughs> Excuse me. 9.8324. So, now that I know what the density is, I can convert from milliliters to grams, but I don't have milliliters of water, I have liters. So let's go back a step. If I want to convert from milliliter to liter, then I would look on my 
prefix my metric prefixes and see that milli is equal to 10 to the negative 3. So little m equals 10 to the negative 3. There's one one thousandth of a liter in every milliliter. And it's also true to say there are 1,000 milliliters in every liter. So you can either multiply by 1,000 or you can divide by 1 1,000th. One Those will get you to the same place. 1.324 liters. So in order to calculate the molality, I need to get to kilograms. Oh, I'm not even at kilograms yet. I'm still at grams. Right now I've um, canceled liters, liters on top, liters on bottom. Milliliters on top cancels milliliters on bottom. And now I'm left with grams. So the answer, what I need for molality is kilograms. So I need to have grams to kilogram. And one kilo is 10 to the th positive three grams. So now I look at my unit conversion, liters cancel, milliliters cancel, and grams cancel, and what I'm left with is kilograms. So let's plug this in. 1.324 divided by one thousandth times 0.98324 divided by one thousand. This equals 1.3018 kilograms. So it's very similar to the number of liters. But because we're at 60 degrees and the density is not quite 1, right? if we were really close to 0, then the volume and the mass would be very close to being equal because that's almost one. But here all the way at 60 we're at 0.98. If I was at 90 degrees the density is 0.96. So the mass of the water is very similar to the volume. It's almost one gram per mil but it's not quite. So it's a little bit different. So when we calculate the molality, lowercase m, we have to take that into account. So moles of solute same number that we calculated before, 0.26249 moles of NaCl divided by 1.3018 kilograms of solvent. Solvent is water, kilograms of water. 0.26249 divided by 1.3018 0 0.2016 small m molal what's uh, up buddy can we play video games? sure bye Thanks, sweetheart. You're a sweetheart. Bye. So you can see that the molarity and the molality are very similar to each other um, because we're talking about the moles of solute and we're talking about the moles, um, in each case, moles of solute. But in one case, we're talking about the volume of the solution. And in one case, we're talking about the mass of the solvent. So they're very similar numbers but they're different, um, they're slightly different. And again, the reason that we would calculate molarity and molality, the reason why we might use one instead of the other, is that the, temper the molarity is going to change as the temperature changes. This number is not constant with temperature, but this number is constant with temperature. This number will not change regardless of what the temperature is.
calculate the concentration of a solution consisting of the same solute and solvent that we just looked at at the same temperature but now let's calculate the concentration using these other units so mass percent let's start with this one mass of solute divided by mass of solution well we've already got the mass of the solute but right now we have liters of solvent so we'll just put the mass of the solute on top because that's already given we already have grams of solute but we need to convert this to grams the mass of the solution so remember to keep an eye on these terms solute solvent and solution so I need to convert the liters of solvent into the mass of the solution what is the mass of the solution well remember mass of solution I'm just going to abbreviate here equals mass solute plus the mass of the solvent so once I convert the liters of solvent to the mass of the solvent then I have to add mass of solvent to mass of solute to get the mass of the solution and then I have to divide the mass of the solute by the mass of the solution and multiply by 100 Okay, so let's get the mass of the solvent. I'm running out of room, so I'm going to do it down here. I have liters of water. Oops. 1.32. Oops. I didn't even do the number right. 3.42 liters of water. And to convert this to mass, I need to know the density again. So the density of water at 60 degrees Celsius is 0.98324 grams per mil. So I need to first convert this one liter is 1,000 milliliters so again I'm just doing this the opposite way that I did in the last one you can either multiply by a thousand or you can divide by one one thousandth they'll get you to the same place this time I'll, I'll multiply by a thousand and now I put milliliters on the bottom and I can use my density point nine eight three two four grams per mil so I already have grams of sodium chloride so um, in a mass percent they could be gram over gram or kilogram over kilogram but I can't do gram over kilogram so it doesn't matter what units the mass of solute and mass of solution are in but they have to be the same so since I already have grams of sodium chloride I'll just stop at grams and, and get grams of water so 1.324 times 1,000 times 0.98324 let's make sure our units cancel out remember that's why we set it up like this liters cancel liters milliliters on top milliliters on bottom and what I'm left with is grams so I have 1.3014 Oh, I put the decimal point in the wrong place. 1,301.8 grams of water. So to get the mass of the solution, I have to add together the mass of the solvent and the mass of the solute.
So mass of solution, I'm going to do that right here. equals 1,000 301.8 grams plus 15.34 grams. One, three, one, Seven point one grams. All right, we're getting close. So now my mass of solute fifteen point three four grams. Mass of solution one thousand three hundred and seventeen point one grams. Point one grams times one hundred. 15.34 divided by 1317.1 equals times 100. 1.165%. One so this is our M over M percent. 1.165. All right, let's calculate the volume percent. I think you can see how we're going here. The volume percent is vo volume of the solute over volume of solution times 100. So for this particular problem, let's see, what's the density of sodium chloride? I suppose we could look up the density of sodium chloride and convert this into a, a volume. Let's try that. All right, the density of sodium chloride we go the crystalline sodium chloride has a higher density than water 2.165 grams per mil so sodium chloride we have 15 Point three four grams of sodium chloride and the mass according to this chart is 2.165 grams per mil and since we already have the volume of our solvent in liters let's convert this to liters so 1000 milliliters per liter we check our units. Grams cancels grams. Milliliters cancels milliliters. 15.34 divided by 2.165. 2.165 divided by 1,000. So a very small number of liters of solute. So now we need the volume of the solution. So if this is my volume of solute, and this is what I had mentioned earlier, uh, was that yes, the solute does have some volume, but when I add this volume to the liquid, um, generally it's this volume the sodium chloride will take up less space when it's dissolved than it does when it's solid. So this is the amount of space that this sodium chloride will take up when it's solid. But when it's dissolved in the water, it's not going to take up 0 0.007 liters. So the volume of the solution, even though I can technically calculate the volume of my solute, I can't say that that plus 1.3 or two liters equals the volume of my solution that's not true and the 
the reason that this is not true is because when I dissolve solid sodium chloride in water, it no longer takes up this much space. It can get much closer together. So let's just assume like we did before, the volume of the solution is just the volume of the solvent. We only have to consider water. And even if we were considering this, we would change it from 1.342 to 1.349. It wouldn't change the volume very much in the first place. And I'm saying it doesn't even change it by that much. So let's just assume that the volume of the solution is equal to the volume of the solvent. So volume of solute, we can put this number over oops, the volume of our solution which is just the volume of the solvent and then we would multiply this by 100 but again this doesn't really make sense a volume percentage doesn't make sense when I have a solid solute not with solid solute and the reason that we don't usually use this unit with a solid solute is because calculating the volume of the solid when it's dissolved is very difficult to do and it doesn't make sense anyway we would use we would use this percentage if I had the mass of the solute I wouldn't go to the trouble of trying to do this if all I'm trying to do is represent the concentration I would just use a different unit of concentration so we're taught we usually use volume percentages volume over volume when the solute is a liquid if the solute is a liquid, then I know what its volume is already. And if the solution and the solvent is a liquid too, then it's a liquid plus a liquid. Then I'll use a percent by volume. But if I'm talking about a solid solute, it's much easier to just use a percent by mass. Or a mass over volume. So we can do this one. Let's do this last one. So we can calculate mass volume percentage pretty easy. So when we're talking about mass volume or weight volume, the mass is generally in grams and the volume is generally in milliliters. So we have our mass in grams already, 15.34 grams of solute. And we can convert our volume of solvent to milliliters just by multiplying by a thousand milliliters. Of solution times 100. So we get 1.143%. So you can see here that the mass per volume percentage and the mass mass percentage are very similar much like the molarity and molality are very similar representing the concentration is just different ways of talking about how much solute there is and how much solvent there is well I didn't change the amount of sol solute and I didn't change the amount of solvent so the way that I represent the concentration has subtle differences very slight differences but they're nearly the same they're all nearly the same All right, let's look at parts per million and parts per billion. So we've already done all the hard work. I know that there's 15.34 grams of solute, and the mass of the whole solution is 15.34 plus the mass of my um, water at 60 degrees. And the mass of the water, now I've gone and erased it, the mass of the water is 1.342 times 1,000 times 0.98324, the density of water. So then the mass is 1319.5 grams. So here's the mass of the whole solution. And then if this were a percentage, I would multiply by 100. If this is a parts per million, I multiply by 1 million. So how many parts per million do we have? Times. 
times 1 million. We have 11,492 parts per million. How many parts per billion do we have? Well, that same number times a billion. So, one, one, four, nine, two, zero, one, four parts per billion. So if we were, if we're talking about the percentage, then I have 1.142 parts per hundred. If I'm talking about uh, parts per million, then it's the same number, but instead of multiplying by 100, now I'm multiplying by a million. So instead of being times 10 to the 2, now I'm multiplying times 10 to the 6. And when I'm talking about parts per billion, instead of multiplying by a million, I multiply by a billion. And so why would I use these different units of concentration? Well, when I'm talking about percentages, if I'm talking about something that's 1% or 2% or 20% or 80%, then using percentages makes sense. But if I'm talking about a concentration that's less than 1%, I'm talking about a concentration that's 0.00001%, then using percentage is not a great way to represent that concentration anymore. right? If I'm talking about a, a concentration that has a 0.0001%, it's not even 1%. It's an incredibly small number. But there's still something in there. So how do I represent that number in a way that's more significant to what's actually happening? Well, I wouldn't represent it as a percentage. I would represent it as a parts per million. So if I had 0.0001% and I multiplied and, it was, and I was talking about per million instead, then this would be one part per million. Oh, I guess I'll do it over here, one part per million. So a solution that's one percent is 10,000 parts per million. But a solution that's 0.0001% is one part per million. So when solutions start to become so small that they have a concentration like this, it's easier to use parts per million as my representation. Because one part per million is easier to say than 0.00001%. All right, finally, let's uh, calculate one with the mole fraction. So mole fraction, I need moles of solute and total moles in the solution. So to get moles of solute, I have grams of sodium chloride. And I know there's 58.44 grams of sodium chloride per mole. And for water, I have 1.342 liters of water. And in one liter, I have 0.98324 grams, the density. And for every 18 grams of water, there's one mole. And I just add one oxygen and two hydrogens. I get 18. So we make sure that we set this up right. We look at our units. Grams and grams cancel. Liters and liters cancel. Grams and grams cancel. So let's plug this into the calculator. 15.34 divided by 58.44 equals 0 0.26. One point three four two liters times point nine eight. Oh, I skipped a step here, didn't I? This is supposed to be milliliters. Let's make this milliliters. All right. So I convert that to milliliters. One thousand three hundred and forty-two milliliters times point nine eight three two four divided by eighteen. 
is 73.306 moles of solvent. So the X of solute equals moles of solute, 0.26249 moles over total moles, which is 0.26249 plus 73.306. And the mole fraction of solvent is 73.306 divided by the same number, the total, 73.306 divided by 0.26249 plus 73.306 equals 0 0.99643 or by zero point zero zero three five six eight. So if I add these two together, plus point nine nine six four three, I get zero point nine 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 nine. So I basically I get one. Right? Add these together equals 1. So here's the mole fraction for each of these different substances.